Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to my show where I help you build a career you love. Today we got a special alert on the coronavirus and what it's gonna do to your job search and your career. I think you're gonna enjoy this. Look, I know we all just took a punch in the mouth, but we're tough and we can take it and I'm here for you. So don't panic. I really do have a full one today. Get in the chat if you're here with me live. Say hi, let me know where you're from. Let me know what you do. Put some question marks in front of your questions because I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot of those today. You're welcome to kibitz with each other and help each other in the chat. It's always lively every week. I have a feeling it's gonna be a little extra lively today. It's great to have all of you. Now, I'm gonna give you the agenda. I wanna talk about a few little, uh, I don't wanna really wanna call them ground rules for today, but I want, you know, in the way that I wanna go through today's program, it's a little different than my usual weekly show. So I just, I wanna make sure we're all in sync. But the first thing I wanna say to everybody besides welcome is don't worry, Uncle Andy's here for you. I'm here for you, you're gonna get through this. And I, I thought about, you know, We've all, we all just got hit in the head, right? Like we all, we, we're all in this together. Things are gonna change. We're gonna have to make adjustments. But I've been working for 30 plus years and I've seen a lot of this for a lot of different reasons. I've been punched in the mouth so many times it's amazing I even have any teeth left. But I'm gonna give you, dare I say, some wisdom from what I've seen from past events like this and crises ailments, financial crisis, all that stuff. I'm gonna bring it all together. I'm gonna show you what has transpired and what based on has transpired. And we all, we're all we all common sense people, right? How, how is this gonna affect us going forward? And what does that mean for you now? How do you get out ahead of the curve? How, how I wanna, I really wanna spend kind of the first half of this talk today illuminating that, the whys behind why I want you to do what I want you to do. So we're gonna go through that. Now, first thing is, let me run through um, a, little, a little agenda, and I'm going to just tell you what here, what we're gonna, what we're gonna go through. So, that's right, that's right. And then this happened. And for those, I stole this one from the power of your personal story, my, my big event that I had last month, that some of you came along and I said, hey, your greatest stories are gonna start from a pit, from the bottom, and then this happened. This is gonna be the beginning of a great story for a lot of you, it really is. It really is. I know you're probably thinking, I'm out of my mind, but I'm telling you, it is. It will be, hang in there, okay? So let's just run through the agenda. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna kinda go back and forth with some of these slides. I wanna give you my little let's remain calm and some of the ground rules up front. I'm gonna talk about the indelible mark that I think this crisis is going to have uh, because of this outbreak, how it's gonna shift the way we do things in the future. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanna talk about some revolutions and, and what has transpired. I'll give you a couple of a quick funny stories from my, my past. What I think is gonna change for you going forward, it's gonna be different for everybody depending on what it is you do and your profession, how you work, where you work, what country you live in, but there are gonna be some, some trends. I am going to run through the industries that I think are at risk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this not to scare you, I'm gonna do this to inform you, and I wanna make sure that you're positioning yourself properly so that you actually can land, on, land out of this with cushy slippers on your feet, okay? And then we'll talk about some of the, the industries I would get ready to target if I was looking for a job or if I needed a switch. What are some of the tactical changes? So this will be prescriptive. I'm gonna tell you specifically what I want you to change. And I'm gonna tell you what to expect with job interviews, what I think will happen, how I think they'll be called off, when I think they'll come back, all that good stuff. The mediums are gonna change. We're gonna go through all that. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about video interviewing because you're gonna have to learn this. You're gonna have to learn it, if you're interviewing, that is. And even if you're not interviewing, if you're working and you just love me and you're here anyway because you wanna hear what I have to say, video meetings are gonna become important. So I'm gonna give you a few, few quick tips on that I'm also going to highlight what the skills are that employers are going to look for now. They're going to become a little hypersensitive, shall we say, in looking for particular traits. I want to make sure you've got your stories down cold related to about a half a dozen traits that I think they're going to be looking for. 
I want to tell you which five questions I would ask them on top of all the other questions I want you to ask them. And then we're going to talk a little bit about following up uh, related to networking because you're going to be doing more of that. That's going to be a, a job search adjustment and interviewing when you do have interviews, when they get called off, when you have interviews and they go through all that good stuff. And then I'm going to I'm going to kind of package it up here at the end with uh, with some freemiums that I, that I want to give you. I want to point you to. Look, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've got a lot of free stuff. I've got so much free stuff, I can't even fit it all on my on the Mile Walk Academy site. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point you to the things that I think are going to be the most value for you right now. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, wanna, I, I do, I do want to talk about the, the um, you know, kind of the little ground rules. You know, Kara and I, Stacy, we were talking the other day and I said... I love my community. They are the nicest people in the world. They cheer each other on. They come to the shows every week. They ask me awesome questions. They make me a better coach. But I know that you know this is this is affecting us, right? It's it's it's, it's wearing us down. And I know because it's wearing us down, we could be getting a little raw and we might be a little edgy today. So I wanna I wanna show you. I wanna ask you. I'm pleading to you to be gentle to all of us, to each other, and be as supportive as possible. This is literally worldwide. And my community is 50-50. It's 50 in the US and it's 50 everywhere else, which I think is awesome. And I decided I wanna show you something I use every single day to remain calm in the face of anything that happens to me. I'm, I've never showed this to anybody. It is the front page of my journal that has been the same front page, let me see, that I've been using for four years running. So so for four years, so 2020, 19, 18, and 17, this has been the first page of my journal. I look at it every day in the morning to remind myself, and I'm not going to read it all to you, but be responsible for your energy, okay? With things like this, we can be individually the, the calm in the face of the storm. We don't have to fuel all the negativity. We don't have to fuel the rampant rumors and the negative talk and the slandering and all the other stuff that is ridiculous that goes on. We should be pulling together. Okay, so please be responsible for your energy. Be responsible for it every single day. Be responsible for it with your families, be responsible for it on social media, and please be responsible for it in the chat. Okay, and you know, just adopt that learning mindset. This is happening for you, not to you. I know it looks bad. I know you're having a tough time. I know you're stressed out. I know your companies are freaking out. But we'll get through this. We will. We will. So just, you know, Think about it. Recognize you're being prepared. No complaining. That's my big one. Okay? You can you can rewind this later and look at that. But that's the front page of my journal. I write it the same way every um, every year, although my le- handwriting gets a little less legible every year, it seems. I don't know. But anyway, I'm here to help you. I got you back. Have each other's backs. Okay? All right. Now, I want to talk about some things. Sorry. Right, we gave you the don't panic already. Now, I said I work in 30 years, long time, and every time we go through something like this, there's an indelible mark. There's going to be an indelible mark. Most of you probably already know what that is, but I want to share a couple stories with you because I think they're kind of funny. But I I thought back to the last really nasty one. Now, we've had some, you know, we've had the swine flu and we've had the Ebola virus and we've had a couple of other medical-related issues but 13 years ago, when we absolutely got crushed in the, the financial markets, which turned into employment market melee, of, to end all melees, uh, you know, I, I remember in 2004, I was buying a condominium. Some of you might have seen videos of me shooting in my condominium. So if they're not looking like this wonderful little office, uh, they were in my condo. And I was going to get a loan for my condo in 2003 and then 2004 and I had this mortgage broker and he says to me, hey Andy, you know what, Uh, could you tell me how much you earn? I said, "Uh, sure, here, I I, I earned this last year. He says, okay, that's great. I said, well, don't you need some documentation? And and 
you know, to get me the loan and you need like a paycheck or anything to substantiate this? No, I just, you know, we'll just write that number in and then we'll run a little background check on you and give me your social security number, they'll run a credit check. And that's all it took to get a loan. And then a few years later, I wanted to refinance and that's all it took to get a loan. I didn't re- I didn't supply anything. We were fast and loose that day. Then all of a sudden, the market crashes in 2007. And then, as you would imagine, just like the Fed lowers the rates right now, the borrowing rates, same thing happened back then, right? They went, they dropped down like a stone and everybody wanted to refinance. And I couldn't even refinance. It took me six months. I had all kinds of trouble and all that good stuff. I couldn't shop my loan around and all that. Finally got it refied. And then, you know, as time goes on, these indelible marks remain. So my wife and I wanted to buy this house and it went a little something like this. Can you supply me your W-2s and your wife's paychecks and all that? And every month, can you send me her paycheck? And and every quarter, can you give me your business uh, profit and loss statement? And then we're getting up and we're getting closer and as if this wasn't bad enough, like pulling teeth, the week we were about to close, the broker calls me and he said, Andy, we need you to pay off all your credit cards. They are. They're zero every month. I pay them off. He says, no, we need you to pay them off in advance. Like, I said, wait, you mean the 300 bucks that are on my credit card, you need me to pay that right now. He says, yeah, before Friday, before we close, that has to be zeroed out or you have to bring a check for 300 bucks with you to the close. I mean, this third, you know, we got this house in 2017. So 14 years later, however, or uh, 10 years later, 13 years later, however long it is, these are the kind of things, the pendulum swings way the other way. Now, these are not always bad things. This one happened to be a little bit uncomfortable for me trying to get the house, but you get what I'm saying. These are the kind of indelible marks. And what happens as we go through these changes, there's always a revolution, right? We evolve. It doesn't need to be a revolt. It's just an alteration. And I, it reminded me of this time where I used to work for a large consultancy called, it's called Accenture now. It was called Anderson Consulting back then. And I was working for Amico, which became British Petroleum, which rebranded back to Amico in the U.S. And I would wear my suit and tie every day, 22 years old, 23 years old, 25 years old, right? Super fun, love to dress sharply. But the Amico folks, they decided at some point that on pay Fridays, they were going to wear jeans to work. And it was kind of a treat. So every other Friday, and we had to keep track, so we showed up in the right dress uh, attire. And then all of a sudden, it was every Friday. Then all of a sudden, more and more companies started doing it. Then it became every day and so on and so forth. Now, I wear pajamas when I talk to you at live office hours and half of you work from home and all this other stuff. But but some of these, the evolution of these changes occurs slowly over time and then it kind of catches fire when more and more companies do it. Now, where's that leave us today with what's happening where a lot of you, the 400 of you that are here with me now, are a lot of you are probably inside your houses, right? Depending on what your job is. And, but wouldn't you say that we've been, a lot of companies have been, been getting comfortable operating remotely for a long while now. And, and I think what's going to happen as part of this remote revolution is more and more companies are going to do it. That's not going to be a big surprise to you. It isn't. But there are going to be some changes that companies go through. And I actually think that while we've been queuing this up for a while and it's been slowly occurring, this, this, this ailment, this outbreak, this crisis that we are going through is going to make precipitous changes for a lot of companies. And you need to know that because it's going, it's going to, to, to be very much uh, is going to affect what I'm going to tell you about what's going to happen to job interviews and what you're, a lot of you are experiencing right now. As companies become more comfortable with remote workers, which they are going to do because they're getting baptism by fire, so to speak, right now, companies that are ill-prepared to operate remotely are having to operate remotely. Companies that were reluctant to let people work from home are going to get really comfortable really fast. And the way that that occurs is because you will prove to them that you can operate independently from the comfort of your own home. Some of you are going to have a painful time with it. You got kids sitting on your laps. You got the dogs barking. You've heard mine, I'm sure. But you will make adjustments. Companies will make adjustments. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to become a lot more comfortable with it. You're going to enjoy it. I like the two hours a day that I don't have to commute like I used to. I like not having to get on a plane. I used to love getting on a plane. I've seen a lot of cities. You know what I mean? So so you're going to get comfortable. Your employers, they're going to like the fact that they can reduce that commercial office space that they've been spending a lot of money on. 
they are. My uh, my wife's son, Garrett, he works for a financial services company, big company, a lot of financial services, support, credit cards, and so on. He used to have to go into the office every day. He works a four-day shift. They work four 10-hour days. And they, he's on the security team. They always wanted him going in. And he got sick. Somebody else got sick. This was a, a while back, a month or two ago, you know, caught the flu or something. And so, you know, we'll work from home. And then a couple of the teammates were working from home. The boss decides, you know what? Um, let's get everybody set up to work from home. This was before, you know, this this pandemic occurred. That they were really, you know, that this was in our in their face. And by the end of next month, everybody on the team will be equipped to work from wherever they want. And he said, you guys can live wherever you want in the U.S. Just like that. Now they might have been well down the road. They might have already been in in process. But this is not difficult today with the technologies that we have. It really is not. So a lot of you are going to be facing this. So where does where does that leave you? Well, that's gonna that's gonna change a lot of things for your searches, for the way you your careers, uh, the companies you might want to target, and so on. So why don't we get into some of the detail about? how I would adjust what I'm doing. Now, whether you're job searching or not, I want you to be mindful of this because it's going to affect you. And some of you, it's going to affect you right away. Some of you, it's going to affect you in a month. And some of you, it's going to be six months. But either which way, I want you to, I want you to understand why this is going to occur, who it's going to occur to faster. So let's take a look. I want to switch back to, back to my slides. And I want to talk about these industries that I think are immediately at risk. Now, here again, I have seen, uh, I, you know what, I, I've been appalled at what I have been seeing on the internets with trainers and coaches and the scare tactics and how they're telling you they're going to be massive. Yeah, there are going to be some layoffs. I don't want you to freak out about it. I want you to understand why they're going to occur, how I think they're going to occur, what this is going to mean for you and what you can do. But I do think it starts with recognizing, am I in a situation where it's risky? Okay, now some of you might have been discovering this already and some of you might, it might not have hit you yet. But I just want to take a look at, at a couple of these industries that are going to be hit immediately and what this is going to mean. You you recognize while we are all in our homes or in our offices that we're not traveling, we're not going to parties, we're not going to bars, uh, events are called off, the NBA is called off, right? Spring training, baseball, hockey, all these, you know, all these events. Anybody who's in, a, in event planning, event right sales all that good stuff concerts any kind of large venues you know they're going to get hurt right now that'll come back but for the short term it's going it's going to take a hit now what i do think is going to oh maybe i didn't get maybe i didn't get all all the things in there i i, I <laughs> travel but the airlines the hotels all of the all of those venues that are related to travel agents and things of that nature related to that industry is going to take an immediate hit, any longer term hit. Because as I said before, as companies become more comfortable working remotely and people don't need to travel for meetings, they find out that video conferencing and Zooms and WebExes and all that good stuff is good to go and manageable. Business travel is going to go down. So that's going to be much, much, going to have a much longer term effect. Manufacturing, well, People in factories are not going to work. They're not manufacturing products, whatever those products are. So that's going to be affected for the foreseeable future. That it's going to be hard to catch up. And the other companies that rely on manufactured goods to operate their businesses, like transportation, commercial transportation, large product transportation, is what I'm talking about here. This is different than personal distribution. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna take major hits. Commercial real estate. So what's gonna happen when when organizations now I don't need space for 200 people. I need space for 20 people or 50 people. I don't need those long leases. I don't need to pay all that money. And rents are gonna be suppressed because people are not buying them. So rates are gonna drop. That's gonna affect commercial real estate lending any kind of development and all that good stuff. So so these are these are important things for you to know as well as there's going to be a host of non-essential fallouts, technology items that people do not need. 
It's going to drop. Retail clothing and other things and people don't have money to spend. Think about everybody in the hospitality. Think about if you're if you're in if you run a bar or a restaurant or you're a DJ or you're in the spa and you're the massage therapist and you're not making money. It's going to take time to recover. You're not going to buy clothes, you're not going to buy purses, you're not going to buy those kind of things. All that stuff. You don't have money to buy a new car, right? Financially, you're not investing. The markets get hit. Those are all in the wake of the immediate industries that take the biggest hit. And then there's a domino effect. Okay, but it's not all bad news. It's not because there are so many industries that are going to be on the rise. I ran out of real estate. I ran out of real estate on this slide. I just want you to start thinking about companies and company types and industries that will actually thrive as a result of this unfortunate situation, right? Wellness, healthcare of any kind, right, is going to boom. Payer, provider, in company, anything related to that is gonna is gonna thrive. Pharmaceuticals are gonna go nuts. The biotech and research industries, nonprofits, social work, counseling, and all that good stuff. The government is going to need more people to handle the chaos, believe it or not, right? And everything that's related to the support that the government's going to give us in order to, to get through this. Personal loans. You a real estate broker for loans for personal homes? You're going to be in business for two years. Well, everybody's going to want to be refinancing. These rates aren't going up for a long time, right? So, so, so now I can go and I can go refinance my house if I want to pay off all my credit card debt, show them all my W-2s and all that good stuff, right? If you are in that field, you're going to have a lot of work, as well as, oops, sorry, as well as grocery stores, chains, other, uh, and, and and so not, I mean, not just in the stores. But a lot of the bartenders and all those folks are going to be moving into grocery style jobs for the stores themselves. But corporate, right, the chains are going to have a lot more to do related to people buying food. Think about, I went through my house the other day. I went mentally through my head. What do I do from the time I get up to the time I go to sleep as I was putting this talk together for you? What is everything that I touched? Everything that you touch from the time you get up to the time your head hits the pillow, all those industries and anybody who supplies those kind of products, go for them. They're going to be in business, right? People are going to be at home more. They're cooking more. Home entertainment, and I'm talking about anything related to home entertainment, right? Gaming is going to become more popular, things of that nature. I got a whole gym inside my house, right? It's probably going to get bigger and I'm probably going to get more equipment. I need, I need the equipment. I need the stuff to clean it. I need everything that touches what I do. What about the home office? A lot of you were not equipped for this. Some of you are probably at your kitchen table right now with a kid or a cat or somebody crawling on you watching me, right? Is that, give me a shout out in the chat if you, you know, if that's you. Actually send me a picture to the support queue. Anything that's related to high speed internet, communications, video conferencing, you're going to be having happy hours on Zoom for the you know for the next month, right? All that stuff is going. I did a coaching session two days ago with a woman in Boston or in the, in the New England area. Normally, what happens is we do the session via Zoom. It's recorded in about a half an hour to an hour after it's over, and then I send her the nice video of her and me talking for the coaching session. It took two days for that thing to get to get recorded because of the increased demand. I said to Kara, "Hey, can you get in the queue and see what what's what?" She says, "I'm 219th in the queue. We're never more than one or two in the queue, right? So think about it. go after those companies." that are going to support that. Anything online, this, anything that you can think of, Facebook, Instagram, any of that stuff, any social media, any streaming, Netflix, anything that can be done online, Hulu, whatever they are. Productivity tools, these are gonna boom, right? Those rates are gonna go up, more people are gonna start using Slack and other, whatever tools that they use to communicate, just an example. But you get an idea. I would love to know I would love to know, throw this in the chat and maybe we, you know, we can chime in or, or Kara and Stacy can, 
can Slack this to me. Are there, okay, so like I said, I, this is just a, an abridged list of things that I thought of off the top of my head. Are there other industries that you think are really going to thrive? Contribute to the chat. Let me know that, right? This is, today Today is about support. Are, are there ideas that you, you can give, that we can share, that you can share with people in the chat? I would love to. Love to see it. I'm giving swag out at the end. So, you know, get in there and make me proud and contribute to that chat. All right, so let's talk about what all this means. All right, so now you got the background. So what do you got to do? What do you got to do? All right, first thing, actually, you know what? I haven't been using my notes here. Hold on a second. So first thing is the organized one is going to be the one that wins. The one that thinks ahead, that thinks smartly, as opposed to the one that keeps calling, you know, Marriott, wondering why, you know, they, they aren't calling them back, right? That That's knocking your head against the wall. Don't do that, all right? So you're going to have to make some adjustments. Now, I want to talk with you about the spirit of this talk, the tactics and the techniques we're going to talk about. I know some of you have probably been following me for a while, a week, a month, a year, three years, four years, five years, whatever. Some of you probably found me this morning. I'm not going to go through every tactic I've ever given you in the 300 videos that are on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna point you to the alterations that I want you to make in relation to everything I've already taught you. So if, if you're not sure what I mean when I say I need you to create a target company list, go out to my YouTube channel, type target company list and watch the video. Okay, so, so that's the way we're gonna go through this. Now, I need you, okay, I just got done talking for 10 minutes about companies that are falling and companies that are rising. Well, if your target company list was built 10 days ago and you're, you know, you're calling the hotels and the airlines, stop, right? You need, you need to rethink that and you need to go away from those uh, organizations or industries or markets that you were targeting and you need to rearrange the target company lists based on companies that will thrive. Ask yourself, is this something the world is going to need right this minute? That's what you're looking for. Okay, so shuffle it up, move all the other, just drop them to the bottom and reprioritize to make sure you are not wasting any time pursuing industries or markets that are, are going to take a huge hit. Okay? I, I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you, don't, I care about you. So I don't want you burning a lot of time worrying about, well, why is, aren't they getting back to me? They're not going to get back to you. Okay? So you got to stop that. I need you to augment your list. Now, I always talk about this, that you are doing yourself a dis. Okay, so a month ago, I would have told you, you are doing yourself a disservice if you are only targeting companies in your local area. Now, it's one thing if you need, if you work in the grocery store and you want to walk down the block and work, but a lot of you can work remotely. A lot of you, your positions can be operated remotely. And I've always said, you need to start targeting organizations that are outside your area. Well, you really need to do that now. So when you look at, okay, I just got done telling the story about Garrett, right? So he's, he's in his unit. Literally a month ago, they were in office every day, every day, every shift they had to let's try this out to go live wherever you want. That's going to happen at a faster rate, but here's what's happening. Companies, now I don't want to get ahead of myself because interviewing is going to slow, but it's going to shift. I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. But companies are going to start doing these video interviews. You're going to have more phone calls. You're going to have more video interviews. They're going to become more comfortable with people operating um, operating from home. There was a post I forwarded on LinkedIn from a friend of mine, Sean, who is the president of Y Charts, and he talked about. He showed a picture of his empty office. He had somebody who was in the you know, in the local area, go into the office and take a picture. He posted it on social media as a positive message that, hey, bang, within one day, everybody was working from home and we didn't miss a beat, okay? And we're going to thrive. And customer service didn't drop. There's a lot of that if you're paying attention. If you're paying attention to all the negativity and all the people in negative town, you're not going to see it. All right, so you need to make sure that you are targeting organizations outside your geography. I don't care if they have an office near you. Don't worry about that. The point is you need to spend more time with your reach outs. 
and I'll get to an asset you can use, but you should augment it. It's going to happen. It might not happen super immediate like Y charts did, but it will. And I'm going to tell you what else is going to happen for all of you that are getting your job interviews delayed. But you've got, for purposes of what where we're at right now in the talk, I need you to expand the geography. You need to network like crazy. Okay, now, I always wanted you to do this. I always wanted you to avoid the applicant tracking system. But right now, okay, I know that there's almost 500 of you here, but on a usual week for me, my live office hours is, what, 150 to, to 200, sometimes more, because it's Thursday at 11 Central, because a lot of you are working, right? Well, why is it that so many people are here now? It Same quality content, right? You're home, so you could turn me on at lunch, right? So, well, if I'm home, and what's happening? Well, I probably, well, first off, a lot of you have more time because you're not commuting. Increased time. We'll talk about what I want you to do with that. But you're farting around too and you're missing the human contact and you can only play with the kids and the dogs so much and you got more time. So those inbound emails that are coming to you, you want to read them, right? You want to reply back. And you're going, through, you're going through a tough time and now your perspective is starting to get dialed in and you're starting to pay attention to the networking and you're thinking, I better get back to this person or this is nice. And I do, you know, hey, let's, you know, let's a few exchange. Let's pick up the phone. Say, say hi. Have a cup of coffee over the phone kind of thing. That's going to happen. Well, you need to increase this and you're going to need to increase it at a great rate. Because if, if companies are slowing down their interviewing processes, they're not going to stop, but they're going to slow them down. But when people are at home, right, they're going to have more time to respond. So, and people miss the human contact. They do. They really do. Okay. If you weren't if you weren't avoiding the applicant tracking system before, if you thought it was tough getting your resume through before, I want you to imagine the pile that's probably quintupled in the in the application trashing system. So, you're really going to have a hard time if you're going that route. And if companies are slowing down their interviewing, they're slowing down their interviewing for a couple reasons, which we're going to spend, the, I think, the next couple slides on. The applicant tracking system is just going to be that much more full. Okay? You've got a lot of people that are now not working. You've got a lot of people that will soon not be working. And so a lot of them are going to go to the path of least resistance, is they're going to look for job openings, and they're going to start applying. And those job openings are going to be flooded with resumes. It's your worst, worst route. Okay, I need you to do one, two, and three and not four. All right, it's a big, big deal. Now, some of you I know are familiar with my job search challenge. It's free. It is the damn sweetest freemium you will ever get from anybody. I kid you not. It is a five-part video series where I teach you how to do the job search challenge, then I teach you how to how to target companies, how to identify people, how to act, what to say to them from a networking standpoint, and then all the problems you're gonna have, and then I help you troubleshoot them at the end. Five pieces, it's free. You, you create a, a free account in the Mile Walk Academy uh, system, or if you have an account, just access it. I will talk about this at the end. This is gonna become paramount. You're going to need to become an ace. This this little white background italicized thing, that's job searching people. It's not shoving your resume into the applicant tracking system. It isn't. You're not going to get ahead doing that. You're not going to get job interviews that way. Some of you will. Yes, you will. But most of you will not. So you're going to need to learn these skills. And I'm offering to you for free. So we'll talk more about that at the end. But that's something that um, I know a lot of you have gone through it. I think the first week we did it, 2,000 people went through it. So a lot of people are getting a lot of, having a lot of good results. All right. So here's what you can anticipate as it comes to interviews. Now, you're going to have cancellations. There's no doubt. There's absolutely no doubt about this. Why? Well, some companies are just going to flat out stop hiring. That's true. Okay, you know that. I just got done going through a whole list of industries that are going to take a huge hit. But there are other companies that are going to freak out. 
because they don't know how to handle working remotely. They don't know how long this is gonna last. None of us do, I wish I did. If I did, I'd be in another line of business. And they're going to need to figure out their remote working situation. It ain't gonna take them forever, okay? It won't. Set up the, you know, the infrastructure. Um, it, interestingly, there will be hiccups. Uh, Stacy was telling me, we were, we were chit-chatting the other day, and she was telling me how her husband's, in her husband's uh, working environment, that they're, they don't have enough bandwidth to allow people to work remotely, so they're having to work in shifts. And sometimes you can get, you know, you work X number of hours, and then you get bumped off the system, and then you can't get back on until, you know, somebody else gets bumped off and so on. There's going to be some of that. Work's going to slow down for some organizations that are not equipped to do this. Okay, there's going to be all kinds of different things happening, but companies that are already equipped to work remotely, of which you should have a clue of who those are because I gave it to you, but the only way you're really going to know is if you're reaching out to companies. Okay, so yes, you're going to have some delays. All right, that's okay. I want you to expect it. I want you to anticipate it. You're going to have an increase in phone interviews. I've given you phone interview skills. I've got an article about it. I talk about it in a lot of different videos. You're going to, you're going to have more of those. All right. Now, what I think you're going to get a drastic increase in is there's two kinds of video interviewing. There's, well, there's many, but there's one way where I open up the program. There's nobody on the other end. I'm asked a question and so on. I get a minute or two or three to answer it. I go on to the next one. Those are screening tools. I do not, I do not anticipate a huge increase in those beyond what would normally happen for companies that are using them as screening tools. Okay, I don't. I think, yes, they will grow, but they will grow at a rate that they normally would have grown otherwise. The two-way interview, video interview, where somebody's actually on the other end, that's going to really increase. I would love to know in the chat. Please share with me here. Are you guys seeing a precipitous uptick for those who are either getting their first interviews? Maybe it's a phone screen and then a video interview. Maybe some of you had in-person interviews scheduled that now shifted to video interviews. I would love to know uh, if you uh, if you are seeing that. Shout shout in the chat and let me know if, if that's the case. I would love to know that because I, I'm i pretty dang sure. I mean, I'm seeing it in my job search boot camp where the people are going inside the program and letting me know, hey, this is switching to a video interview. I got a question about this. So I do, I do, wanna, I do wanna talk about this uh, a bit, but you should see, um, you should see a, a precipitous uptick. Now, I do, for those of you who don't know this, I'm gonna hold up my little book. I hope you can see it. Interview intervention, communication that gets you hired. Order it right away, people. We still have people in the warehouse that are picking it, packing it, and shipping it. If you do not have this book, get it, okay? It's practically free, all right? Literally, uh, I, I paid for the book. I pay for all the services. I pay for the shipping, what you pay is $7 because I have envelope costs and I have warehousing picking and packing costs. Okay, so I'm asking you to chip in a little bit for that, but you get the book, you get the ebook, you get the audio book, you get some bonuses, and most importantly, not only is it the tactics, but this book and grabbing it for the mere $7 allows you to enter our private communities, the Mile Walk Academy Facebook group and LinkedIn group, which you can lean on, where I offer extra coaching. So, and you got more people. So, so, so grab that, but it's a great, great, great freemium. And maybe, maybe Kara, can you, um, can you, you know, drop that in the chat? We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but grab that. It's, 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 um, it's, well, it's seven bucks. All right, video interviewing tips. now. I got some videos out there. I shot two videos, beauties. One is a 20 point checklist that I go through every week like this. It's 20 minutes. It's awesome. If you have not seen it, please watch it. It's called Video Interview Tips for Job Seekers. I've got another one called Hire View, how to ace video interviews. So that one way thing I was talking about, there's, there's Spark and Hire View and a bunch of them that are one, they're all the same. 
Um, but basically, you get asked the question. Nobody's on the other end. You're sitting there talking by yourself. Uh, and how to ace that. So I got two videos out there that I would highly recommend watching. However, I want to give you a few right now. All right, here we go. Framing, baby. Okay, this is framing. You see me? Folks, you see me? All right, where's, oop, that is not me. Hang on. <laughs> now you're seeing, oh dang, hang on one second. You're seeing the other side of my, Live TV, love it. Okay, this is framing. See the top of my head? All right, that's framing. How do I look? I'm in, I'm full. Do I look imposing and powerful? Okay, right? Like, I'm with you. Do not do this, okay? You look diminutive, and you look like you ain't, you ain't there, right? It's like, you know, when you, when you sit down at the table, and then they sit down like this, Right, so you need you need to make sure that you are framing it. That means you need to practice it. So get that set. That's a big, big deal. All right. So now I want you to eye contact. You're talking to the person. You're not doing this. I have to do this because I have to read the question. But when you are video interviewing, you are not looking at your screen. You are looking at your camera. Okay, so, and the camera, whatever you use, should be dead eye sent. So I'm not like this. I'm not like this. Don't, 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 you know, you don't want that either, right? So you wanna, you wanna stay in the frame and you wanna stay level with the camera. Pile up the books, get a tripod, I don't care. A lot of you are gonna be working from home on an ongoing basis, you might want to buy um, a little, I have a, what you're watching, like live office hours, week in and week out, I have a super high powered camera that I use when I create like recorded videos. But when we do live office hours, this is just, this is a Logitech uh, 1080p C922, I think. Not much, not much money, probably less than a hundred bucks. Um, but you just plug it right in to your computer and you can, you know, you put on a tripod. Mine sits on my monitor. For those of you that have, I have a 27-inch monitor. Bang. Hey, wouldn't you know it? It's like, and I'm a little guy, so I just, you know, it's right there. But you want to make sure that you're doing that. And the other thing is, always, always, always. Now, now I let you, I let you see my sunroom. But if I didn't have lights behind the camera, my face would be jet black because the sun is behind me. So it's going to wreak havoc. Now, if you, you don't have to have big, powerful lights. Uh, if you have a video interview in the daytime, the best thing you can do is have the back of the camera up against a window where the light is coming. It doesn't even need to be sunny out. It does, you need no lights, and you can do it that way. But you want the lights on the other side of the camera always so that you can see yourself. Okay, and here's the other one. You might be surprised. But the survey says, and I'm telling you for sure, audio matters more than the video. So, I have a microphone. You don't need a super powerful microphone, but you do not want to sound like you are in a well. They need to hear you. I don't care if you're model good looking or you're, you're as good looking as John G, my friend out there, my brother from another mother. You got to make sure that your audio is in order. So if you are using a laptop mic, it is not going to sound good. If you are sitting, okay, my office is large, okay? If this microphone is not right to my mouth or I'm not super close to it, and I've got all the doors open, and so the, it, there's echoes and it drowns out the sound. If you are in a room, you might want to make sure that the doors are closed, that you put a rug if there's a gap between the door and the, and the, the hallway or whatever. Make the room somewhat soundproof so you don't have a lot of echoing. Believe me, it doesn't matter what you're saying. If they cannot hear it effectively, it's going to go badly. Okay? So I don't care what you do. And I don't recommend, I really don't recommend you doing a lot of things with your earbuds and all that other good stuff. It does look a little silly. This isn't, look, I don't care if you're chit-chatting with your friends or you're, you're doing this for your video, your work meetings, but this is an interview. Give yourself every advantage 
Now, you don't need a microphone this powerful. I have a pop filter. I have all kinds of stuff for this thing. But you know, you don't, certainly don't need one of those things that people leave in the in the view of the thing to look cool or whatever. You just want to make sure that you've you've got a a good enough microphone. I actually there are microphones that lapel mics that I can clip in that you can put right into your 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 laptop or or, or your computer and you'll have a great quality sound. When I when I want to shoot an Instagram IGTV or something, I have a little microphone that'll go right into my that'll go right into my. Uh, iPhone and it the sound quality is a thousand times better than if I just hold it like this you can use those and and then there's just little splitters or whatever that go right into it's simple stuff but it is worth it it is worth it this is is huge is huge huge deal it's going to become really really important and then those are the videos that I mentioned they're out there if you go to my YouTube channel and type video interview those will 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 come up all right now that's looking good on the on the camera now i got more i got more suggestions in those video interviews about the applications how you set this up um the lighting and and, and all that good stuff so i would check that out all right well john g you use earphones but you're so handsome it doesn't matter man all right Employers are going to now become more conscious of your remote working skills. So what am I talking about? Well, you know, you know they're going to ask you. Oh, sorry, guys. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I was clicking in the wrong spot. There we go. Organizational skills. All right, so, so let's run through these really quickly. I want to draw your attention. These are the skills that they're going to be paying extra. Tell me about a time when you organize something. How do you work independently? Time management, right? Communication. Motivation. Are you self-driven, disciplined, right? How are your processes and so on? Hang on. All right, technical proficiency. Now, you don't need to be like a Java coding guru. I'm just talking about, can you get the video equipment working? Can you run Excel? Do you know how to turn the computer on? Or can, you, you know, can you manage and all that good stuff? So you gotta, you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready for that stuff. Now, you also, you also have some additional things that you now need to evaluate. This is going to last, people, right? This is going to go on. So what's your outlook and strategy on the current crises? What are, you, what are you doing to position yourself for the future, right? What are the risks that you anticipate, seen and unforeseen, like controllable and uncontrollable? What could happen to you? Do you work with vendors that could go out of business, suppliers? What are you doing to overcome those things? Kind of stuff, right? How are you positioned? Are you making sure that business can go on as usual? Excuse me. What did you what did you do in the midst of the crisis? I want to know. Why do you want to know this? Cuz you want to know how they handle crisis. You want to know how they handle unexpected change. What did you do to support your employees? These are damn good questions, people. Do not think that this is aggressive. If you don't ask these things, you're doing yourself a disservice. You really are. And I would be really shocked. And I'd be a little suspect about hiring you if you didn't. What surprised them? What, 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 what plans did they have in place for something like this? What have they put in place since? You want to know this. This is a test of their mettle. What do you expect to change going forward, right? I'm sure it's not all fixed. It's only been a few days. Wait, think about how much has happened since last Tuesday, meaning nine days ago. When Jay asked me that nice question, I gave you my opinion. And all of a sudden, between that time and now, I had, to, I had to literally had to change my entire schedule this week so we could do this today repackaged my digest i have a special event for you everything's changed in a matter of days well i'm a small company i can do that i care about you so i'm driven to do that but companies are they equipped to handle things like this this stuff happens it does 
It might not always look like this. It might not be always front page news, but it happens. All right. Now, I mentioned that I want you to, to send a lot of, of, um, of reach outs. So I want to talk just a little bit about following up. Uh, I've talked about this at length. I've given you, you know, kind of Andy's golden rules, but I want you to go nuts on the networking. I want you to target people inside thriving organizations. I want you to contact all your peeps, all the people you've worked with. I don't care where they're working. Start getting connected. But I would, I would be gentle on everybody. Do not... Like, if somebody doesn't get back to you right away, you have no clue what they're going through. All right? None, mind you. So, I want you to send them, okay? But internally, I want you to have no expectations about their responses or how soon you think they should get back to you or what they should tell you or whatever. Okay? So, you're going to have a lot of first dates on the emails, so to speak. I would rather you concentrate on the firsts. Get them out. Get them moving. All right. I still say the seven day rule applies. So if if you send Andy an email, Andy, I'm, you know, I see you run this blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in this and that. I want to get connected. In seven days, it is okay to reply. Why? It's still a decent amount of time. You don't need to be too aggressive. Your follow ups should be incredibly short anyway. Hey, Andy, I sent this to you a week ago. Just, I know, I know times are crazy right now for everybody. I just wanted to follow up. You want to move it out to 10 days, 14 days, that's fine. Okay? But it's not, it's not a big deal if you follow up with me a week later. I got, I got emails daily. I get, hey, did you read my email from yesterday? Did you email, email from Tuesday? Like that kind of stuff. It doesn't bother me. Okay, so 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 it's okay to do that, but just 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 have a you know just be go easy on people. Use your judgment. Okay, now if you get an interview, all right, you're, you go into the interviews, you do the phone thing, you do the video thing or whatever. Now remember, just to remind you, companies might be slowing these down. They might need to be figuring out what's what. They're probably wanting to keep going because they know at some point they're going to have to hire again, these companies that are going to thrive. Okay, so what you, I always want you to get what? Three things every single time. Three, what are the magical three? Who's going to contact me? When are they going to contact me? Right, sorry, what, what are the next steps? Who's going to contact me? And when are they going to contact me? I don't know. I just work here. Okay, what would typically be the next step? I recognize we're in a crazy time. Well, what's usual? Look, just because they slow things down, most of them will not actually change the sequencing of their process, right? They're still going to go through the steps they're going to go through. They just might go through them differently. What would that normally look like? Okay, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, what would it look like? Right, just ask them. Okay, the recruiter's going to get back to me? Great. Well, they usually get back to me. Okay, a couple days? Great. Okay, so you got to know when you think they're going to get back to you so that you can follow up appropriately. If they say, I'm going to get back to you tomorrow, you give them one grace day. They say, I'm going to get back to you in two days, you give them a day and a half grace day. They say, I'm going to get back to you in seven days, you give them three days grace days. That kind of stuff. So, and if they don't give you anything, I still want you to follow up in seven days. You can still be persistent, okay? It's okay, right? They've got to keep moving through their process. Hey, I just wanted to check in. You can throw in. I realize we're in the middle of a, you know, unprecedented situation, but I just wanted to check in. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So I want you to stay, you got to stay consistent. And here's the other thing you got to remember on the follow-ups. When you, when, when, when you are sending your initial inquiries to companies, if you are not hearing back and you go out seven days or whatever, that's fine. I would give them another, say, two, three weeks beyond that. And, and it's okay because my guess is most companies in a month are going to have this sorted out. Now, I have no idea what the world is going to look like in a month. But one thing I do know that's going to happen within a month is companies who have had to make the adjustments, going to remote work, getting everybody situated, getting everybody the machines and the machinery and the internet access they need. And all, that's going to be figured out. Okay, it will be. And any company who can't figure that out within a month, they're not going to be around anyway, so you ain't going to have to worry about that. 
Okay, so just just keep 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 all that in mind. All right, now here's what I want you to do. So I've given you some of the changes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recap here some things that you can take advantage of. Virtually everything on this page is free, except I'm gonna mention a couple of the other things. Uh, we got a lot of free. If you are not on my email list, people, give me give me you know Kara will get you in there. Download anything you want. That gets you on the email list. On Tuesday, I'm gonna kind of recap this video for you. Uh, I'm gonna give you kind of a list of, I, I don't know what I'm calling it, my coronavirus toolkit or whatever. But you gotta be on the email list to get the list of links and all that other stuff. Um, I'm all over the social sites. Now, if we are not connected on LinkedIn, why the hell not? Okay, send me a LinkedIn connection request so you can leverage my network, which is vast. I'm connected to a lot of people. You can use my network. I'm happy, and I like to know who's in my community. Let's just get connected, right? That way we can follow each other. That way I can see what you're doing, and I can read it in my feed. You can read my stuff in your feed and all that. Good. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. On Instagram, if you are not following me on Instagram, every single day I give you a, a quote of inspiration, and uh, we started. Actually, Stacy can confirm this, and I don't know if it's gone out yet today. But you're going to get a video every day on, on Instagram, IGTV. It's going to be like a two to three minute or one to three minute or whatever it is. And it's going to go out every day. And so that'll be there. It'll all be nicely packaged. So, so follow me and get connected with me on those sites. Go to the Mile Walk Academy site. You will be blown away by all the free stuff. There's nobody that gives more stuff away than I do. They just don't. And that's okay. And it isn't even all on there. So between that and my YouTube channel, you should be able to figure it out. But I would definitely, if you are not sure, you can always email support at milewalk.com. The Job Search Challenge, it's a five-day program. We give you a video a day for five days. We give you a welcome email in the first video right away. And then what happens is each day for the next four or five days, I send you an email with a lesson and an a and access to the video inside your system. We kind of pace it. Um, it's very, very cool, but it, th those are skills you're, you're going to need. You're going to need them now. Okay, so if, if you are still stuffing your resume into the applicant tracking system, you're going to have a tough time. All right. Now, next Thursday, I got an awesome one. Now, you all, you got more time on your hands. You do, because you're not commuting. You might still be working a lot, but... You got time. And even if you don't, you need to make the time to skill up. I'm going to talk with you about the 12 activities that you need to be doing. Number one, to accelerate your career. Number two, to make sure that you are making yourself indispensable so you do not let go, get let go. And it's really all of these things will be about how to upskill and, and how to go about planning to upskill and how to go about upskilling and all that good stuff, which is something everybody should be thinking about all the time, but especially right now. And that's called Catapult Your Career. And the sweet thing about that is not only is it free, but if you get in by Sunday, if you go to the Mile Walk Academy site, it's like right at the top. You just click it and then you just put your name in. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I've got a beautiful email lesson each day. I pour my heart and soul into these folks. It, it like there's the story, and then there's the action item, okay? And then that's Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Thursday I'm gonna send you an email with the workbook. There's a workbook that's gonna allow you to follow along with my session next Thursday. It'll kind of be, it ain't gonna be slide like I'll be talking direct to camera because I like direct to camera better. I feel like we're connected that way, but it's really good. You'll be able to follow along. It's really sweet stuff. It's really sweet. It's free. And then I mentioned the interview intervention book. So this thing is get it, get, get it today because they're still at the warehouse picking them. Okay. So, so grab that. It's going to help you with your interviewing skills. And then if the least expensive way to get in the private communities. Now, when I say the Mile Walk Academy community, you are all in my community. If you are here with me, you I, I count it. I love you, okay? If you're on my email list, that gives me a chance to share with you. If you get the, the interview intervention book or the out of reach but insight book for the $7, the free book offer for $7, so 
kind of, you know, I know it's a little oxymoron, but you, you get what I'm doing. You can get in the private groups, so the LinkedIn group and the Facebook group. So you can get in the private groups where I, I don't let anybody in. You got to at least, you got to do something to invest in yourself. So the seven bucks to me is investing in yourself. So do that. We send you a welcome. You can get in the groups. All right. If you also take advantage of any of my freemiums, which I think are awesome, and you don't even need to take my word for it because there's tons of testimonials. There's tons of video testimonials. There's tons of social proof. You can look anywhere you want. You will see people loving these programs. If you're job searching, my boot campers are going to get a lot of instruction like this to make sure that they are positioned to overcome all this stuff. And the program is deep. It's five modules, very organized. But the most important things for you to understand right now about it is not only is it structured and all that good stuff, and it'll help you with the speed even amidst these times, but I'm going to be live privately with the boot campers so they can ask me their scenarios. And you get lifetime access, but you get lifetime attendance to the more than 24 private coaching sessions throughout the year. So if you jump in at any point, so on April 3rd, on April 17th, on May 1st, I mean, I'm going to be with them. Okay, because I number one, I like to be with them anyway, but they need me now more than ever. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to break this down for them. So all that's in the job searching program, and then my leadership program. If you are considering upskilling, this is the absolute best program because not only do I give you monthly private coaching, I give you a four hundred dollar career accelerator program, which is really sweet. Any, any enrollment gets you that. But look at some of these topics that I've covered. Unexpected change, habit building, energy, the power of your personal story. Remember I opened up with, hey, every story, the really great ones start with, so there was this time when I got crushed. Well, this is going to be the beginning of a lot of your stories. You need to know how to tell this. Um, personal branding, how to focus, and so on. The Catapult Your Career is a freebie that I'm going to give you as well. That's going to be on Thursday. And then on Friday, I'm meeting with the 27th. I'm meeting with my leaders. Uh, so next the week from tomorrow uh, on remote working. I'm breaking it all down on how to be incredibly productive. And I know there's a lot of stuff floating around the internets for free about that. Very basic. But I'm going to give you the deep dive of the 16 years and how I make this all work and how I put out a lot of stuff. So those are some things you can consider. And I do want to cap this off with, I would love, we're going to go to questions here in a second, but I want to, I want to talk about, I want to talk about one thing. What are you doing with this additional time to upskill yourself? I would love for you to go in the chat and let me know what it is you're doing to take advantage of this time to make sure that you are using it productively. I understand some of you are, you're, you're laid off immediately, right? If you work in a bar, you ain't working. You work in a spa, you ain't working, right? Those kind of things. You work in the beauty parlor, you ain't working, right? I understand that. So you might be looking for a job. That's okay. That's cool. But some of you, 90 some odd percent of you are still working, right? Or, or, or at least you're working now. So what are you doing to take advantage of this time? And some of you might be, I'm getting positioned to job search. That's cool. I respect that and you should. Um, but others, you've got time to grow your skills. What are you doing? Let me know in the chat. I want to look at, I want to thank everybody. First off, thank you for coming. Really thank you for coming. If you're watching this on the recording, I hope you enjoyed this hour-long session. Evelyn O from New York. Let me see if I can actually, I might be able to... Um, 12.04. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 Get in here. Can you wish all my people good luck with this coronavirus epidemic? Oh, it's social distancing. <laughs> we, we don't social distance in you guys, the house. stay safe. Good luck. This will pass. Just um, keep a positive attitude. And this morning, I just wrote down all the things I was grateful for. Um, even during this time. And it's it's really helpful to be intentionally grateful. Thanks, Linda. My lovely sure. wife, Linda, with a Y. In case any of you want to send us gifts. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> Love you. Thanks. I need some swag, honey. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna work that. You know what? I haven't even been shouting it out because I ordered the samples because I wanted to see what this stuff looked like. But we're gonna send some out because because that's the way we roll.